Okay, the first portion is who will learn to use Python from R and R from Python. So I will show both way. So there are many different like as a data scientist, which one to use R or Python. There, there both have, both of them are like pros and cons. So we'll try to learn both of them. So for today. Data file or the script is located in the Google Drive, also in the Bitbucket. So today we will look at R Python and R Python. So first, let's look into R Python. under Python. For some reason, I think Linux version is more stable and more easy to use. So, to install RPy, it's really easy. So, just go to your Linux terminal command and just type sudo pip install RPy. Like this command here, mm -hmm. RPy2. Or you can use easy install RPy2 or home install RPy2. So, all of those things work for. For running RPy2, you have to be R. Is our version is greater than 2.2 and Python greater than 2.6 at least. Mm -hmm. And another passing comment easy install used to be used a lot, but it's actually yeah. not supported and it's not liked and yeah. it's a bad idea. You should you should not use it. Yeah, pip so is okay. Pseudo pip works <coughs> and condo or condo, condo install, yeah. If you're uh, continuing. So to run this thing, we just I just open up Python, sorry, Linux terminal command. So I just log into VB80 VM virtual Linux machine. So in that one, I install both RPy2 and RPython. So just type Python to launch Python command line. So now we're inside Python command line. It's Python 2.7.6, so it meet all the requirements. So We'll try to run our commands from here. So just load all the required packages for, for the modules for Python. So that's just a Python console or that's an IPython console? It's a common line. Mm -hmm. So from RPy2, we import R objects. So in R object, it just helps to like grab the R functions or R values from uh, R software. So I import the RPy2 R objects and import as like import R. So import R is a synonym, so we don't have to write the full names RPy2 R objects to run the comments. Then also again, Another R objects I import is like R O. So it will import all the R objects. And there is a very nice feature here called common. So it makes a common ground for the like panda data frame and the R data frame. So you can just ah. load between those two. So it's a very nice feature. Now we're trying to get some of the R package to Python. So R has like very good some of the statistical package, so we're trying to load those things. So first we'll try to load uh, stat R a stat package. So just stat import R. So it will load the 
basic are a steps package. So just also load the car base package. And you can import the data set package also. So we can show some example. So data sets package contains like different type of data sets. So let's load one of the data set. So we are loading the empty data data set. So common data platform map, load data. So now we loaded the empty data data frame from R to Python. Panda data frame. So you can run all the Panda commands here, like here, here. You can see. Mm -hmm. So now that MT cars data set is both a it, it's a data frame over in R right now, yeah. and it's a separate pandas it makes a object in, yeah. in Python. Python. Right now. Yeah. And you can do manipulate also this thing. Maybe okay, you want a new column, so maybe. You can see a new form. Let's see what we do. So you can do all of this thing, and now if you want to use this thing into R, or you want to make some model with this data frame into R, you can easily convert this data frame to R also. So to convert this thing to R, you have to use again the com command. So convert to R data frame. Just pretty much. So now, it, so it converted the Panda data frame to R data frame and saved it like RDF. So you can like develop model using RDF. So let's just try a simple regression model using R. So first we will define the formula. So it just runs the same thing. So formula name is like the model name is like mm -hmm. fit full. We are using a stack package and the ln functions. The formula is the formula we defined is MPD, the function of weight and cylinder two, and data we're using RDF. So we can try with DF the panda data frame, but it will not work. We can give you like okay, you are using R function, so you have to use R data frame. Ah. So just convert it to our data frame, just use that one. And you can use the summary function here because we bring the summary function here. So summary function is located into base. So we go to base package, bring the summary function. So this way you can easily use Python interface to like get into the R statistics or our very large statistical computing and use those things in Python. So right now you've been sitting in Python and you've been doing things from R and getting results back in Python that you could then go on and do more math on and things like that. Yeah. So this is our Py2 package, so you can do everything. In R, it's like Python. So next one, we'll look into our Python package. So that one, we'll do the reverse thing. So we'll be inside R, and we'll do Python command from R. So uh, command. 
So R Python dot R, it's also in Bitbucket account, Bitbucket folder, also in the Google Drive. So just load that one. And for this one, this package it only runs in Linux. It doesn't it it doesn't have a Windows version, and I don't know anything about Mac. So and well, Spy has problems in Mac too. So to run this thing, just or to install this thing, just sudo pip install r python, it will run everything. And it has some requirements, so Python has to be Python version has to be better than 2.7 and R has to be 3, greater than 3.2. So the common one is very straightforward, so we'll just start off. So first we define some variables. So we define two variables A and B and we will execute some Python commands on using these variables A and B. So this R Python package it's basically consists of like five commands. So first command is like Python assign. Mm -hmm. So it assigns some R values to some Python variables. So now we have like A and B variables. We want to assign it to a Python variable or maybe C or D. So we will use Python assign. So first, which variable we want to assign? Maybe we want to assign in C. And what are variables we want to use? So maybe we want to use A. So now it launch a Python session and declare a variable C <coughs> and C store the values of A. So here uh, we have to be very nice. So type of A or A class is integer, but when you assign this thing to Python, it saved as a list. So when you run any Python command using R Python, you have to keep in mind that like whatever variable you're passing, it's saving as a list. So, so we can check the length of this A. So in length of A is 10. So we can see like what is the Python variable length. So in Python we use len to <coughs> measure the length. So we want to find out Python length. So that's for this reason we use Python execution command. So Python execution command is like run some Python command in from R. So so here. D equal to length C, so if length C is to find out the length of the list mm -hmm. of length of the list, uh, list length of C and save it as save it in D. So it executes and it says in D. Now we can get the value of the D. So to get a value or particular value, we use Python get command. So Python get which variable value we want? We want D. So just D. So we get D. So we are saying okay, so D has the same as C has the same length as its A because it's storing it. We can also get C value, so we can see one plus A plus So these are like very simple commands. So you can assign something in Python, get those values also in R. So now we can I can show you like how to Define a function in Python from R and how to get those values. So for that one, we will use Python execution command again. So we using Python execution command, we will send a bunch of like text. So define now maybe a function summation list it will take the input a and b so python function 
option is like different. The variable change of the line change is defined by tab. So that's why I'm using slash t. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is just a simple function. It will take a list a and it will take two list a and b and return the sum. So that's it. So just So now let's run this function. To run this function, we use Python call, so it calls a function. So we know the function name, it is summation. These are like all simple commands in Python, so just run those things. So you can have, if you have a, like a Python script, like something dot by, you can load those things with Python dot load and the script name. So you can load that thing. So yeah. this is all from Python, and so you can use. Some also, you can run some ggplot.com. So, <laughs> so, so, I'm just SSH into that one so I don't have graphical interface, yeah. but if I have graphical, I can show you this thing. So, I can mm -hmm. pull ggplot. Okay, so that's all for me. So, what do you find this is useful for? What's the actual mm -hmm. paradigm of when you would use this versus trying to find a native? way of doing something. So, if you say like this is a like Python statistics side is not as developed as R. So sometimes you want to um, run analysis on very big data platform which is not, cannot be loaded in R, mm -hmm. but you still want to use the R statistics side. So you can load those R statistics side and run the Python, run those like statistical model in so this way, this is one of the way usefulness of this thing. The other way maybe, so you are an expert in R, but you want to like the way we use it in our big data structure. Mm -hmm. So we download our data from HBase, so we can use Python happy base structure to get the data from happy base. So these are like some of the use of this. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. So now we switch out into LaTeX and Markdown and topics like that for the rest of this week. Do you want to make your bar at the top disappear? I think it'll work. Yeah. 
If you go to full screen share it must by over the screen you can make that pop up. No, just screen you can see it's off of the uh upper left corner of that one. Oh this see over there in the ceiling. Now just make it not full screen, make it that. And now size it so it fits into the screen screen. So we create a file and then you can save it as. So I build a folder, I'll name it as test. And I also name my latest file with test and click save. And then And 
you can see mm -hmm. uh, test from TX. So the .tx file is a basic latent file which we will edit in. And then we'll start to make our first document. Define the type of your uh, uh, document so it is an article instead of books or presentations. And then uh, the begin document and end document uh, define the environment where you will have your test. So all of your uh, uh, text should be uh, within this uh, environment. So let's see. So it compile and build a PDF file for you uh, with the settings you just typed here. And now if you go to the folder, you will see the test.pdf. And, and there are some other auxiliary files which you do not need to care about, but they have to be there. environment, uh, the PDF file is in the same, uh, it, it's also in the environment of Text Studio. Uh, if you want to generate an uh, independent PDF file directly, uh, you can uh, change the options of Text Studio, five clicks option, uh, configure, configure Text Studio. Choose the PDF viewer to external PDF viewer and click OK. And then you compile and build it. If you pop up the uh, uh, Adobe Acrobat uh, PDF file. Mm -hmm. And let's uh, change it back to the PDF viewer, just uh, convenient to compile and see the result. And then based on this uh, basic uh, LaTeX file, uh, you can do some modifications to make it to be more like an uh, article. So you can do
So now mm. I'll bring you to the title and also in this. And the command make title, print the title. And then you see the uh, article title and the author and the date are automatically centered. You did not uh, ask it to do this, but it, there's a default setting to make this. Uh, with special font size for the article title and special formatting. Uh, this is all based on what, uh, default setting, and you are always free to make uh, your make the settings by yourself. And then uh, you can also make some uh, sections. For example, we make. Section, section. It generates a section, and you can also make a result. And you can also make Section and uh, sub subsection. Uh, I believe the, the next one is the paragraph. So uh, all of these uh, red uh, letters here. Which begins with a backslash, backslash and is the command of the data. Tab. And the command uh, uh, comes with arguments, uh, which is the letters inside the curly uh, brackets. Uh, and the arguments in this curly brackets is uh, mandatory, uh, so you have to input it. And so there is also optional arguments, which is inside the uh, square brackets. Um, for example, we can define the paper size of the article and the font of the article. And next, uh, we'll see how the LaTeX manages the spaces and empty lines. So, um, for example, if you do this is the first paragraph, you get the same graph. So multiple spaces is the same as a single space. Make a different paragraph. Uh, you have to make the make an empty line. And, and multiple empty lines is still the same as a single empty line. And if you want to skip a line, you can do. Backslash, big skip.
how to change the style uh, or change the font of your text. See the backslash E M P H uh, with curly brackets uh, define the style of the text with the F size. And the mm -hmm. backslash with text it define the text be italic style. And the backslash uh, text BF the change your font uh, to be bound. So there are many many Command like this to change your text style. And then uh, you can also use environment to control the text style. Uh, let's see. Where your text? environment uh, always uh, begin with a backslash begin something and end with a backslash and something. The environment also has uh, optional arguments, uh, which is uh, included in a, a square bracket, and, and we will uh, encounter this kind of um, environment in the future. Are we done for today? It can be. Oh, there's another three minutes. Let's do one more topic. Mm -hmm. So the next topic is a special characters. The, the most special character is a percent sign. Uh, the percent sign introduces a comment. So everything uh, following the percent sign uh, until the end of the line will be ignored by the link tab and will not be printed out in your PDF file. So if we put the percent sign here, it disappears from your PDF file. And you can um, comment 
comment and uncomment uh, a lot of lines all together by doing So you can remove a whole section of your paper, but not throw it away. Yeah. And some other uh, characters are reserved for the latex commands. So you cannot use them directly, uh, such as the percent sign and the brackets. Uh, you cannot use them directly. And also the backslash. If you want to input uh, those special characters, you can do uh, backslash followed by the characters you want. You want. For example, if you want to input the percent sign, you can do backslash followed by percent sign. And then you get the percent sign uh, along. And also, And if you want to input the uh, Greek uh, letters, uh, uh, like beta, you can do backslash with uh, the uh, It pop up some error um, because we are in text mode, we are not in math mode. So it does not want you to input this kind of uh, letter directly. So we can add a fusion backslash or pound style. Third over right there. And there are a lot of uh, special characters in the text studio. And I think there is also some other uh, things from the menu. Because the dollar sign is a special character. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Here we go. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, if there are some very special characters uh, you want to input, there is a website for you to uh, search for it. It's If we want to input Y, we just draw it. And there are multiple <laughs> ones, you can figure out which one you want. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very useful website. <laughs> so if you want this one, we just copy this to your paper. And 
some letters uh, like this one. It asks you to use a package. So in this case, you can then copy this package to the beginning of your document, just before the beginning document. And then you copy this. 